Game Chat Born episode 78 starting right about now. Welcome to Game Chat with Buana, your source for gaming news and reviews. Now, here's Buana McCall. <laughs> This is Game Chat Buona. Game Chat for Buona Glasses Edition. Episode 78. Coming at you live at twitch.tv slash Buona. <gasps> Something's wrong! I must fix it now! Wait! Wait for it! That's this up. This up. What? Ah, this. Ah, this. Ah, this. Ah, this. It. 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 This is Game Chat 1, episode 78, coming at you live at twitch.tv slash Buona and at live.buona.tv. We're here at twitch.tv slash Buona, in case you didn't understand it. We're at twitch.tv slash Buona. We're at Game Chat with Buona. It's 3 p.m. on Saturday, August something. What is it? August 10th. We do this every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern. We talk about the last seven days of gaming news. The last seven days, and we, we try to go across the internet, see interwebs, and we try to find the best gaming-related stories that we can find and there's been a lot of stuff going on man i just got done playing this game called papers please mm, pure unadulterated fun papers please and spelunky came out on steam as well dota 2 internationals are going on it's just all kinds of gaming goodness going on in the gaming world so i'm not gonna hold on i'm not i'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna blame them i'm just we're just gonna go ahead and get started yeah, yeah! Game Chat with Buona would not be possible without the support of our corporate partners. Twitch.tv, Wirecast, YouTube, and 123 Systems. Thank you all for your support of Game Chat with Buona. Yeah. Yeah, Game Chat Buona episode 78 starting right now. We're going to talk about Payday. Payday 2, which this article, when I saw the headline, I kind of giggle smirked. Giggle smirked. Giggle smurf? Giggle smirked. Some people got a, they got a word called giggle snort. I call mine giggle, giggle smirk. So I'm just like, <laughs> you know, you just let a little smirk out and you giggle. You go, <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> giggle smirk. Remember that when somebody asked. Payday 2. The game is already profitable. It ain't even out yet. <laughs> Payday 2 is already profitable and it ain't even out yet. Despite the $40 price tag. It's profitable. I, I mean, what can you what what possible bestest thing is ever is that you could wish for as a game developer that your game will already be profitable and you ain't even released it yet. This is just solely based on pre-orders. People have been clamoring for this game already. Payday 2, this statement, comes from the guys over there, Starbreeze Studios. Today, Starbreeze has once again demonstrated that our strategy of focusing on our own properties is correct. We weren't wrong. Not only have we managed to deliver a desirable product in Payday 2, but have executed a also executed a promotion that few companies our size can. We now look forward to the royalty income that can secure the company's development of its own IP in the future. This Payday 2 generates blah, this Payday 2 generates revenue for the company six days before release. It's of course very unusual for games of this size and strengthens the long-term nature of our strategy. So, y'all got money. In other words, uh, people are not ashamed to pay for games that they want to play. Uh, and I, this is actually the first that I've heard of a game becoming profitable prior to release. Now, granted that this is a smaller studio, not a giant like Blizzard or, you know, Blizzard Activision or somebody like uh, like EA Dice or those guys, not like uh, Ubisoft. You know, but, you know, they're kind of small. So in order to be profitable, I guess they didn't have to sell that many. But still, if you are... A game developer, this is a good thing to know. Good thing to have. Check it out, guys. Over on MTV. This is not MTV. This is PlayStation Lifestyle.net. They got the details. Payday 2 is already profitable, man. It ain't even out yet. It ain't even out. For our next story, Dota. Time for that Dota. Dota 2. 
two dotos in a row. Make peas in pot and make apple sandwich with donut on top. <laughs> Dota 2, the international prize pool, is now tops 2.8 million. I want to talk about this is because uh, this is a unique thing for esports because the users actually contributed to this prize pool. Uh, Dota 2 has an item called the Compendium. The Compendium is an item that you can buy from Dota for $9.99, and they give you $2.50 to give to the players. So $2.50 is going to go to the players' prize pool, and uh, you get a bunch of stuff with this Compendium, man. You get, like, fantasy teams. You get, like, uh, all kinds of... You can pick, you know, winners from the uh, all-star matches and from the one-on-one -on -one matches, and um, you get items you get taunts you get a courier that can be upgraded you get all this stuff and you're giving money to the players in the prize pool if we reach the goal i think it's uh 3.2 something million 3.2 million the, the finals are tomorrow so i don't know if we're gonna do it it's gonna be a hard stretch to get it by tomorrow 3.2 million the players will be able to uh pick the next dota hero and what they did is they had stretch goals throughout the whole thing and the reason i'm talking about this is because this is the largest prize pool in history in any esports event the number one team is going to get 1.4 million things 1.4 million dollars um second and third place runner-up will get six hundred and nineteen thousand and two hundred and eighty one thousand respectively that's a lot of money man to split five people uh, uh. and the players were the biggest reason why it happened. Check it out, guys, over to escapist.com. Dodo 2, that big prize pool is getting a lot of viewers on Twitch as well and on Dodo TV. Check it out, and you're over there. Sad news. Went from happy to sad in like five seconds. Triumph World has closed their San Diego office. This was the hub of the Defiance MMO. The Defiance MMO office was housed here in the San Diego office, and day-to-day -day operations will now be moved to the Redwood City office. Now, people see this, and they go, oh, no, Triumph's dying. No, this is standard. It's it's it's, it's a sad standard because it happens it, to every MMO. Every MMO, what they do, they contract people, the game's out, they fire them all, and they close the office. They do it every time. And I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a common practice in the industry. I always expect it shortly after game release releases. I'm, I'm ready to hear about layoffs or I'm ready to hear about cut, you know, cut headcount and closing offices here and there. It's just something that happens all the time. Uh, I'm not writing this office, that, you know, something like that. This is not a good thing. Um, but the game's not dead. The day-to-day -day operations have been moved to the Redwood City office. And these are the same people that manage Rift. So, um, it, it, you know, like I said, I really wish companies would adopt different practices when it comes to this stuff. Invest in your developers, man. I wish they would invest in their developers, keep them there, and not just let them go when the game's done. That's, that's To me, I hate when that happens. But Triumph World closes San Diego office, shifts Defiance development to Redwood City. I actually saw some tweets from, um, I think it was Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog tweeted that they were hiring if anybody needed a job from the uh, try on layoffs they were hiring. And that's one of the cool things about the dev studios that is that they, you know, they'll do that in a heartbeat. They're like, oh, we heard there were layoffs. Guys, if you need a job, come over here. It's, it's one of the coolest things I've seen amongst the industry. So check it out, guys. This is over on, I forgot the site. That's why I did this. <laughs> Gamepolitics.com. They got the details about Triumph World closing their San Diego office and shifting Defiance development to Redwood City. Now, for our next story, we're going to talk about Eorza, that Final Fantasy fourteen, And this is an article talking about... Actually, I'm on the wrong link. <laughs> Here we go. This is an article talking about the latest things that are coming up. Because Final Fantasy fourteen is slated to be released very, very soon. And there's going to be a series of events leading up to the release. I think what a lot of people were interested in, especially those who wanted to try the game before they buy it, is the open beta. The open beta is set to take place on August 17th. This is called Phase 4, the Beta 4 event. And we're expecting, I still haven't got the official word, but we're expecting the NDA to be released or lifted and you'll be able to stream it. You'll be able to come to Twitch, ask questions uh, while watching gameplay. 
this is going to be the phase where the uh, characters will not be wiped. And uh, there's also going to be some other things, uh, including a new class called the Arcanus, which looks very interesting. It's probably what I'm going to play. I was so intrigued by it. Now, there are some bad news with this. There's going to be a level 20 cap in Beta 4. A level 20 cap. And the reasoning, and this is what the, the this is a uh, highlights from the producer's letter that took place on August 8th. It was like a three hour event that uh, happened on Twitch. Beta, the, the, the Beta 4 is going to have a level 20 cap. And the reason reasoning behind it is that they're treating it like a demo. They're treating it like what most players are going to treat it as. You know, so I can't really knock them too much. It's not really set up to be a bug fixing beta. It's more along the lines of a stress test slash demo. This particular phase. Most bugs that are going to be fixed have been fixed. Uh, and most things, and he was talking about it in the producer's letter, most things are getting pushed back to version 2.1. You know, okay, this is going to 2.1, 2.1. They're getting ready for the 2.0 release but level 20 is like where things start in this game if you played some of the beta i can talk about it you know because they said we could that's where some of the good stuff starts prior to level 20 is a tutorial so um there's story behind it there's a quest line that teaches you everything but pre-level 20 is tutorial after 20 is where you get into some of the more meaty stuff and and we won't if you if you're thinking about playing this and trying out some of the advanced jobs you know like summoner or scholar or bard or paladin some of the advanced jobs that are in here you can't because you have to be higher than level 20 to get them so you're gonna have to buy the game to try those out um sadly they're also going to be having a pvp uh arena a very basic pvp arena something along the lines of eight versus eight tdm Everybody go kill, by, kill each other. And their, their, their reasoning behind this is that they want to test the hitboxes. They want to see how, uh, how the, the server code hand, handles uh, players hitting each other with spells and with uh, melee and stuff and how the stress handles it and everything. So there's no unique abilities. There's no unique game modes. It's pretty much a bare PvP that's going to be in Beta 4. All right, so everything for Beta 4 is going to carry over. Early access, this is something else that they talked about. Early access is going to be on August 24th, so it's like three days ahead of time. Uh, people who have bought 1.0, which includes me, will have up till, let's see, September 9th for free access. Uh, after September 9th, a paid account will be required. So we get like an extra, we get two weeks for free if you bought 1.0. That's kind of a way of saying we, we really messed up. Here, try our new game for free for two weeks. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and there's also going to be some other things. A bunch of stuff. This game is looking to be fairly polished. Really good. I got high hopes for it. Let's hope it... I already know it's going to do better than the first one. I just hope it does as good as I think it could do. Um, if if it does the same as Final Fantasy XI, that would be a success in my book. If it does the same or better than Final Fantasy XI, that would be a success. Uh, some people may see that as a failure because it didn't kill WoW. If it did kill WoW, it's a failure, Borna. Don't you know every MMO should kill WoW or otherwise they go free to play. That's the way it goes. If you don't kill WoW, you go free to play. Check it out, guys. Check it out, guys. Over on Eurza Reborn. They got each other. Tune in to all things Buana throughout the week on live.buana.tv and on twitchtv.com slash buana. So. Doom 4 got canceled because it just wasn't Doom enough. Yeah, Doom 4 was canceled because it wasn't Doom enough. I'm playing this Doom 4 game you guys have developed, and it's just not Doom enough. Excuse me, sir. Uh, can you be a little more? No, I, I don't know. I can't I can't put my finger on it. I'm playing it. It's, it's not Doom enough. Can you make it more Doom? Sir, it is Doom. No, it's not. It's not Doom enough. Go back and add more Doom. I 
ID Software and Bethesda have canceled Doom 4 because it wasn't doomed enough. And they call the project schizophrenic. <laughs> that's, that's harsh. They called it schizophrenic, lacking the personality of the long-running shooter franchise. The problem with the project were, according to this guy, Willitus. Willits? It's hard to articulate, but O2, a collection of things that didn't let it match the quality of previous entries in the series. I gotta say, Doom has been it's been declining uh, ever since Doom 2. I think Doom 2 was an improvement over Doom 1. That's my opinion. I don't care what you say. Um, Doom 3 went down. Doom 4 apparently wasn't Doom enough to even warrant having the 4. So, um, it's... I don't know, man. It's it's not looking good for the, the team over at ID. We're going to talk more about them today. Uh, and Bethesda. I don't know what they're going to do with Doom. I don't think they don't know what they're going to do with Doom. I, I think they've injected Doom into Doom and it wasn't Doom enough. So, we will see what becomes of this game. I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, cancel projects are, they, they can really kill a company, man. If you spend a lot of time and resources into a project, and then you redo it, and then you redo it again, and you redo it again, you're on the verge of doing something really terrible to your finances. Just ask Mr. SOE over there with EverQuest. How many times did they restart that? I don't know. We lost count. Check it out, guys. Over at MTV Multiplayer, ID Software and Bethesda canceled Doom 4 because it just wasn't Doom enough. Now, this might be the problem. The Doom kind of left. John Carmack, the face of ID Games, joins Oculus Rift. You know the people that make the 3D gimmicky thing? That put 3D thing on and... <gasps> Virtual Boy, 2013. And he's joining them as their CTO. But get this! He's not leaving ID. He's taking a full-time job over at Oculus Rift as CTO, which is a freaking full-time job. You know what the CTO does? Yeah, CTO. But then he says, oh, I'm not going to leave ID. I'm still going to manage. Uh, here, here's a quote. I'm going to continue to provide leaderships, leadership for our games in development. Leadership. Is that the same thing as Doom? Not Doom enough? Not leadership enough? I don't know. He's going to Oculus Rift. How can you say you're not leaving ID? You're going to be CTO at Oculus Rift, and you say you're not leaving ID. You're going to have two jobs? Mr. Carmack, you're going to have two jobs? No. No. But this gives me reason to like ID again, because Carmack was the reason I didn't like them. Because of Rage. You guys know that story. Rage blaming NVIDIA for their game being crap at launch. And <laughs> NVIDIA and AMD. Um, this is kind of big. I mean, Carmack, like I said, he's the face of ID. And I think the reason why he is staying at ID because he is the face of ID. And if he were to leave, it would be a big blow to the company's image, their public image. Um, I really honestly think he's not going to do anything over there. He's at ID. He's not going to do anything at ID. He's probably going to check in. Hey, guys, how's that Doom 4 going? <laughs> Is it Doom enough yet? <laughs> Do you think you can get some more Doom with that Doom 4? <laughs> and then he goes back to Oculus Rift and makes a billion dollars. So check it out, guys. This is over, this is over on Joystick.com. They got the details. John Carmack has joined Oculus Rift as CTO. But wait, there's more. The guy who left ID a few months ago, who was the Rage Design Director, he also went to Oculus Rift. It just taking everybody. This is Rage Design Director Matt Hooper. He joined Oculus Rift. He left ID, I think it was last month. No, he left, he left in February. It was a while ago. He left ID in February. And um, if you think about what's going on, man, Doom 4... And then not being doom enough, and I and Carmack going to Oculus Rift, and and Mister Mister uh, who what's his name Hooper going to Oculus Rift. What's left at ID Games? What's left over there at Bethesda slash ID Games? My goodness, everybody's leaving. Wow, 
I, I haven't seen this kind of change and shake up in just a per, from a perception standpoint in a long time. Even though the guy left, he left to pursue personal endeavors. He's still the former Rage design director, which was the last AAA title that ID produced. Oh, man. I, mean, I don't know what to think about it. I really don't know what to think about it. I Like I said, it, it gives me reason to like ID again because I, I hate it, Carmack. That's why I didn't like ID. So I'll buy Doom 4 even if it's not Doom Doom enough. Blink. Blink, blink. Blink. <laughs> but uh, you got to wonder what they're going to do over at Oculus because stories are coming out that Oculus, the people, are, they want to release it for free. So how are they going to monetize? I don't know. They got a ton of funding. I mean, it's like millions of dollars of funding. Um, and it's essentially a 3D head, heads up display. It's like a 3D HUD. Basically, you put it on your face and your games are in 3D, which has been done before, guys. I, I'm, let me remind you, this stuff has been done before. Granted, it's a lot better now, graphical wise and, you know, everything is seemingly better, but the concept is not new. I want to make that clear. Because people think this stuff is new and it's not. It was people in the 80s walk around with these headsets on in virtual reality. Even though the you know it was wireframe and, and nonsensical, stupid looking stuff. Um, it's been around a while. And it's gimmicky. I'm going to say it, guys. It is gimmicky. Oculus Rift may look like a winner, but it is still in the gimmicky category. You're not going to see people walking around the house with Oculus Rifts. Don't, don't count on it. It's not going to happen. Now, they can streamline it. Make some goggles or something that's, that's a little bit smaller or whatever. But it still fits in a gimmicky. People are going to go back to their keyboard and mice. They're going to go back to their controllers. It ain't happening anytime soon. So check it out, guys. This is over on joystick.com. They got the details. Everybody at ID seems to think Oculus Rift is the future. So they're kind of jumping ship and heading over there to that camp. So check it out. They got the details. And you're over there. Please support Game Chat with Buana by turning off your ad blocking software. And for that next story that has story stuff, we're going to talk about Planet Side 2. Planet Side 2 recently announced that they were going to uh, have them have a, a presence on the PS4. And uh, immediately, I think the very first question that people were asking was, are we going to play with this, the PC players? If we're on PC? PS4? Is it going to be in the same servers? I mean, because, yeah, free certs. Psh. Bring on the PS4 players. I can use the certs. <laughs> and watch the PS4 players would own the PC players in the air. But um, on the ground, I don't know, man. It'd be a different story, but Planet Side Two and PS uh, Planet Side Two on the PS4 and PC are not going to be on the same server. They are going to be split, as I suspected. I mean, it's it's a big undertaking to put a shooter class game with console and PC compadres on the same server. It's it's been tried before, didn't work out too well. Um, there's a, a big, big, big balance. And even Dust514, which is a shooter on PlayStation 3, is having trouble balancing console controls and keyboard and mice controls in the same game. Because, um, you know, you can use a keyboard and mouse on Dust514. And it's causing to, causing both sides of the fence to even suffer. So it kind of makes sense that Planet Side 2, the guys over at SOE, would do this. It makes sense that they would split the PS4 and the PC players on different servers. I'm glad they're doing it. I would like to see a planet side environment where there's a lot of people on a single shard. Um, kind of like the Eve Online world that I'm used to. I would like to see that. And I think that's where Planet Side 2 is going to be heading eventually on PC. I think there's only going to be probably a couple servers or three servers, probably one for each region eventually. Um, and I think that's the way to go. But Planet Side 2, PS4, PC, they're going to be split. Check it out, guys. This is over on Escapers Magazine. They got the details. Planet Side 2 splits PC and PS4 players. Now, for our next story, we're going to talk about this stuff. This controversy. 
And it's something that was discussed even as early as when the consoles were launched or uh, announced, I should say. Xbox One and the PS4. The big, big topic is what is going to be included with premium pricing. Because a big argument point with the PlayStation 3 versus the 360 was that 360 required Xbox Live to have a quote unquote superior experience online, whereas PlayStation three was free and supposedly of a lesser quality depending on who you ask and who you talk to but the next generation of consoles with the xbox one and the playstation 4 it's going to be a little bit different and if you don't know the details this article kind of lays it out pretty well but i'll talk through some of it there are some services on consoles you may have heard of like netflix like skype uh, and like some premium content that you may pay fees for, like Hulu Plus, things like that. And the controversy is that Xbox One will require you to pay for Xbox Live in order to use those services that you already pay for. And uh, on the PlayStation Plus side, on the PS4, it will not require it. Now, one of the big things that the PlayStation Plus or PlayStation 4 added that it didn't have before is that you will be required for some games to have PlayStation Plus to have multiplayer capability. That wasn't true on PS3, it is on PS4. So that's the biggest change from the world of PlayStation. If you're in the world of PlayStation, that's the biggest thing. Other than that, most everything else is going to be the same. Uh, the, the ability to record and uh, you know that DVR functionality to create clips, not gonna require a fee on PlayStation. Uh, Netflix not going to require a fee. Anything other than some games requiring multiplayer access is not going to require PlayStation Plus. Now the Xbox Live side, pretty much everything will. Safe to say, including the DVR functionality, including Skype. There's no Skype on PlayStation because Microsoft owns Skype now. Uh, including Skype, including Netflix, including uh, pretty much everything is going to require Live. If you don't have Live and you buy Xbox One, you're gonna have a bad time. You don't wanna do that. Make sure you budget in Xbox Live if you're gonna buy an Xbox One. So, just, this is a good reference article if you're looking, still looking at consoles, the new consoles, and you don't know which one you're gonna buy, look at your budget, look at what these things have to offer, and say, hmm, am I gonna use Netflix? Am I gonna use this? Am I gonna do that? You know, if I, if I have a monthly budget for Netflix and live, am I going to have to pay for something else and something else? You know, you got to look at these numbers and make sure that you don't have to cancel everything because you didn't know. It's best to know ahead of time. Check it out, guys, over on Multiplayer Blog, LMTV.com. They've got the details. You'll need Xbox Live to access many of Xbox One's new tricks, but no PlayStation Plus necessary for the PS4. Now, if you're looking to get a PS4, it might be too late. At least if you're looking on Amazon. Amazon ran out of the launch bundles. Or not launch bundles. The launch editions like instantly. It was really quick how fast they went. Uh, but then they recently came out with these bundles. Where it would come with a game or something else. And it'd be like uh, like $100 more or $150 more. And they'd throw stuff in there. They put those up on Amazon.com. And now according to this article over on PlayStationLifestyle.net. Those are now sold out as well. So this is in the U.S. Uh, U.K. I think I read a story that uh, you could the, the ship date was not guaranteed. Launch ship date was not guaranteed if you were to buy a launch bundle in the U.K. So yeah, it's looking kind of tight. If you want a PS4, I don't know, man. You might have to. It's, it might be kind of hard to find one on launch day unless you go to eBay and make somebody rich. I'm pretty sure there's plenty of people waiting. I think I think a vast majority of people who pre-ordered are going to be putting these things up for resale right on our eBay or on our Craigslist. So every PS4 launch bundle is now sold out. Now sold out in Amazon US. That's nothing much else to say about it. If you're looking at getting a PS4, <laughs> you better hurry up. You better save some pennies and dimes and nickels or something. Because time's running out. Check it out, guys, over on Place 11. And then for our final story, we're going to talk about the Xbox system. And this is a very welcomed Welcome, 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 welcome addition to Microsoft's repertoire. One of the banes of my existence was Microsoft Points. I couldn't stand it because it was like $10 equals 1,600 points. It was this stupid conversion system that made no sense. 
and it's a gimmick it's a scam you know why because you always end up buying more points than you need you always end up buying more points than you need so you're giving microsoft more money than what you want to buy for and it sucks <laughs> i can't stand these points man and i i i, I just uh but you know companies still get around this even without points even with gift cards or even with sony system you know they only offer like 10 25 dollar 50 dollar cards when something that you want is only like 8.99 you're like oh i gotta give you ten dollars i gotta give you a dollar or one a dollar or one extra because i want you know that kind of stuff but the main reason i hated the point cards was that the the system of conversion was just stupid it was so freaking stupid so i was happy to see i actually got this in my inbox as well is that microsoft in the next xbox 360 update and it's going to be bundled with xbox one is now going to be using actual currency it's going to be using local currency that they announced this at e3 um they're going to be using your local currency instead of these stupid points and i'm so happy oh my goodness i'm glad that the 360 is getting it as well i was hoping that they weren't going to limit it to the xbox one but the 360 is going to be getting it as well. So that's actually very, very cool. So kudos to Microsoft for doing this. I am really happy they did it. Uh, so step in the right direction. And uh, no more points, man. I hope nobody comes up with this stupid system. I just can't stand it. So check it out, guys, over on joystick.com. They got the details over there. And that concludes our stories for the day. We're going to move on it's with the show right about now. Do you love Game Chat? Are you looking for a way to show your appreciation? Become a Buona.tv premium subscriber. Check out the details at Buona.tv slash donate. And that concludes episode 200 and something. That's not right. This is the wrong podcast. That's it. Nothing else. That's it. And that concludes episode 78 of Game Chat with Buona. I want to thank everybody for coming by. We're over at twitch.tv slash Buona. We do this every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Come on and check us out if you got time. Or you can check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash buffer. We post the videos up there shortly after we finish. I might be a little bit late with this one because there's some Dota 2 going on. There's some Dota 2 and there's Papers Please waiting on me. So you might have to wait a little bit. No, I'm just joking. We're going to try to get this one up as fast as we can. Um, also follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash born or twitter.com slash born alive, which will notify you when I go live on my live stream. Lately, I've been doing nothing but shows, but sometimes I've been streaming games. You know, there was a time where I streamed mostly games, uh, but now it's like all born of that org radio and game chat. Uh, but I've been doing morning shows before I go to work now. Uh, so you may see me early morning now to stream a few hours and, uh, also streaming after work as well. All right, guys, that concludes episode 78 of Game Chat with Buona. And I will see you all next time. Everybody have a great week. I'll see you all next Saturday. Bye-bye.